I was glad. I said I was glad. Come on, I need some joyful people in here to help me make this declaration on this beautiful day. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you're glad about it, if the joy of the Lord is your strength, you ought to give him some praise in this place. For his overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love, his reckless love, for his compassions fail not. Oh, his joy overflows. We thank you this morning, oh God. We're so thankful. We're so thankful that you raised us up this morning, God. Come on now. He raised us up. Come on, we could be sleeping in our grave this morning, but he raised us up. The least we can do is say glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for one more day. If you're happy for today, put your holy hands together. Come on and give him some praise. Come on and give this men's day some praise. We're celebrating our men today, amen. Come on now. Church, tell the men we thank you. Come on, every one of us not in jail, y'all. Every one of us didn't walk out on our families, y'all. You know, every one of us ain't beating on our women, y'all. Some of us are some good fathers, some godly men. Come on and give God praise for godly men who walk on the auspices and the anointing of Jesus Christ. We welcome each of you all here today, those who have joined us in person and those who are joining us virtually and on the conference call. We welcome you this morning in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? Loving and eternal God, we thank you for another opportunity to worship your name, God. In this moment of worship, God, we ask, Lord, that whatever is going to impede or inhibit our praise, that it be removed. God, every vain thought that's not like you, God, every dark place in our heart, God, we ask right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that you open us up, Lord, that we might be able to receive what thus saith the Lord. And in return, God, the reasonable service, God, we can do is to give you our hearts, our minds, our soul, and our worship. Accept our worship, God. Accept our praise as a sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, God. For we're thankful today, God. You are welcome here, God. We acknowledge you here, God. This is all about you, God. It's not about us, God. It's not about religion. It's not about tradition. It's not about face and form, God. This is about you and how good you are, Lord. So be with us today, God. As we lift up your name on high. As we lift our hands, God. Our hearts, our voices, and our heads. To say thank you. You're worthy. Is he worthy? You're worthy. Is he worthy? You're worthy. Holy Spirit, welcome.
this, this morning's scripture will be coming from 1 Samuel 16, chapter 11th verse to the, four, to the 13th verse. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here of all my, thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for, for we will not sit down till, the, till he come, come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and godly to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for he is, for, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came unto David from, the day, from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Let every head bow. Dear God, we thank you for bringing us out to the church one more time, Lord. Let us be able to fellowship amongst each other, Lord. We thank you for just the things we continue to take for granted, Lord, the ability to move our limbs, the ability, the health that we have, Lord. We just thank you for those things, providing us with those, Lord. We thank you for the blessings that you provide us with, Lord, the ability to, Lord, just be that shining light, Lord, just giving us that guidance to be that shining light amongst on our jobs and our families. Lord, just as leaders in the community, Lord, we just ask you to continue to give us that guidance, Lord, that when people see us, Lord, they'll know that we are godly, Lord, just by the way we lead, by the way we, the love that we show, Lord, the example we set, how we father, how we father our children and lead our children, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, and we ask you to continue to give us, Lord, just the guidance, Lord, and just continue to bless us, Lord, in your precious name, amen. if you believe it. Has he been good to us this morning? Has he been good to us throughout our lives? But we serve a good God, a great God, an awesome God. Amen? He is so awesome and his name is worthy to be praised. Good morning, Basil Creek Church family. So glad to be back before you all this wonderful Sunday morning as we Acknowledge and we celebrate our men on Men's Day today. Amen. Come on and give them a hand clap of appreciation. I know we got tough exteriors and we don't like to show emotion all the time, but we need some encouragement and affirmation. Amen. Amen. I'm going to speak for them. They tough. They rugged. But I'm going to speak for them. I'm all in my feelings this morning. We need some affirmation. Amen. Some encouragement. So feel free to drop a letter in the in his uh, lunchbox or, or to leave a note on the on the front of his car or something like that. Or wake him up with a kiss or something. I mean, just let that man know that you appreciate one how he is a man of God. We thank God for each of our brothers this morning. We got a special treat for you before I do the welcome. We got a special treat for you today. I brought some of my very close friends here. All right. We've known them so long, we do not uh, we do not judge or calculate the relationship 
based on the years we've known, but by how many children we had when we met them, y'all. We only had three children when we met them, so, and when we met them, they had four. And we were like, God, I mean, I know we got three, but four? Jesus, who has four kids and only 30 years old? Man? And then we had two more. Somebody say, don't touch my prophet. Do my prophet no harm. That's what you get for putting your mouth on anointed people, amen? Keep your mouth off anointed people, amen? God put you in that same situation. But we have a treat for you today, uh, Reverend Ed Evans and his beautiful family. If you would, uh, Demetrius and your family, please stand. Amen. The beautiful family. Beautiful family. Know that I love you. I love you all so dearly. And we will be eating pot roast at your house. If you ain't so I want to welcome each of you all today to this wonderful occasion where we're going to celebrate God first, but also acknowledge what God is doing and working in the life of every man. We welcome you in the spirit of Jesus Christ to this morning service. If you are a visitor and you're visiting for the first time or at, uh, you may be visiting from another part of the body of Christ, we want to acknowledge you. We want to acknowledge you. So if you would just stand, if you feel it's appropriate, or put your hand in the air and let the Basil Creek Church family love on you at this time. Let us recognize you. Anyone who is visiting, just put your hand in the air. Come on and let's love on them, Creek. We see you. Come on, let's love on them. You are family. We see you. Welcome. Welcome. You belong here. Amen. We thank God that you... We're obedient to God. You could have been anywhere this morning, but you decided to come and fellowship with us, your brothers and sisters in Christ, and we welcome you. If you have time after service and you feel like it's appropriate, I would love to get your name and maybe give you a pound. Amen? Amen. So, moving on here, after service, we want to make sure that all of our leaders know we're having a quick meeting uh, in the choir room in the back area directly following service. So, if you all would, put that on your agendas to meet with us very quickly service. At this time, we're preparing for our announcements, amen. I'm going to ask that you guard your hearts, your minds, and your calendars as we receive what God is doing in this house. Receive the announcements at this time.
for all those announcements. We pray that you keep them close on your calendar and in your memory. We're preparing for the word today, but before we have our pre-sermonic song, we're going to invite uh, Trustee Ron Moore to come and do the statement of purpose directly following the blessing of our offering. Amen. If you're able to stand while we bless God for all the gifts, the tithes, and the offerings that were given to this house, and join us in a word of thanksgiving and prayer. Loving and eternal God, we thank you right now for all of your provision, for your protection, God. For we know you are the giver of all good things. You are the God of more than enough. You are the God of abundance. So allow us, God, to participate, Lord, in your creation and in your kingdom by receiving these tithes, offerings, and gifts, Lord. Not as a sacrifice, God, but as our rightful service to you, Lord, so we might be able to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to give drink to the thirsty, God, to recovery of sight to the blind, and to preach your gospel throughout this land to the four corners of the earth. Now, God, press it down, shake it together until it's running over, God, and your kingdom, your will, your work, and your way be manifested in Jesus' name. At this time, we will receive Trusty Ron Moore with our statement of purpose, directly following the introduction of our speaker, our own Deacon Hitzel. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Good, good. Good morning again. Good. Why, why are we here today? I was asked to give the occasion. Um even though my wife dressed me like I was preaching today. Uh, I took the bow tie off in the car. So uh, anyway, so anyway, uh, the occasion. Each year, black congregations of all dominations uh, celebrate Men's and Women's Day. Usually, church committee, committees choose an uplifting and inspiring theme for these opportunities to celebrate these saints in their congregations. For Men's Day, the theme usually revolves around becoming or being men of God. This central theme reflects the fact that God wants us to become and live as honorable men of God who reflect God's glory. What is a man of God? A noted theologian, Dr. Tony Evans, addresses this in a number of books and sermons. <clears throat> he says, a true man of God is a preserver of culture, a, prote <clears throat> a protector of <clears throat> community, a standard bearer, a provider of family, a champion of society to keep out evil and usher in good. Being a true man of God involves exercising authority and responsibility along with wisdom and compassion. A true man of God intentionally aligns his life choices thoughts and actions under the leadership of Jesus Christ. A man of God understands that God never said a godly life would be easy. He said it would be worth it. Thank you. Say amen again. Amen. amen. One last time. Amen. It is my honor today to introduce our guest pastor for today, the Reverend Michael D. Evans, Jr. Reverend Evans is a steadfast and empathetic minister, firmly dedicated to serving his community. Having been married for over 23 years and raising four wonderful children, he possesses firsthand knowledge of both the challenges and rewards of building a resilient and enduring family. As a minister, Reverend Evans is firmly committed to helping others discover a sense of purpose and significance through their faith. His friendly and approachable demeanor has earned him the trust and admiration of those seeking guidance, support, 
and motivation. Reverend Evans' ministry is founded on the belief that everyone, regardless of circumstance, merits dignity, kindness, and respect. Through his outreach efforts and sermons, he strived to encourage and inspire those in his proximity to leave a life of integrity and purpose, confident that they are embraced and uplifted by a loving and compassionate God. Michael D. Evans Jr., originally from Durham, North Carolina, is the first of three siblings and grew up as a courteous and soft-spoken young man. Despite having a moderate speech impediment, impairment, he overcame this challenge and even won a state oratorical contest. He and his family regularly attended Northeast Baptist Church in Durham, North Carolina. Michael also attended Hillside High School where he excelled in varsity basketball and baseball. After graduation, Michael pursued his Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering from DeVry University in Atlanta, Georgia. He graduated in 2000. He later married his college sweetheart, Demetrius Hubbard. After two years of dating, and they have been happily married for 23 years, and having four children, Jordan, 21, Justin, 18, Sadie, 16, thank you, and Christopher, 15. Michael's call into ministry began under the supervision of Pastor Michael Benton of Fairfield Baptist Church in Athonia, Georgia. On October 17, 1999, he was licensed in November 2000 and ordained in October 2002. During his tenure at Fatfield, Michael taught youth and adult Bible studies, led the Sunday school classes, served in substance abuse ministry, and worked as a youth pastor. In 2007, Michael and his family relocated to Durham, North Carolina, where they attended his home church, Northeast Baptist Church, under the guidance of the late Pastor Wesley Elam, Sr. Michael started and presided over the youth church having services every Friday evening catered towards the young adult ministry. Michael finds great joy in being a part of ministry and is passionate about sharing God's word and teaching others. He, he has faced and conquered many trials in his faith journey, serving as a testament to how and trust in the Lord can move even the mightiest of mountains. Church, it is my honor and privilege to introduce you to the Reverend Michael D. Evans, Jr. Please stand and give him a round of applause. so much to be thankful for, for all that you've done for me. Put life, health, and strength, and you put a roof over my head, you've been so good to me, yeah. I want to say thank you for all you've done for me, not once but twice, all of my life, you keep on I am. 
down You protected me Even through the storms and rain You've been right there by my side Even through my heartache and pain You kept your arms around me all night long You never, never left me alone that we forget sometimes that it could be some other way. Hallelujah, somebody. You don't have to have a house. You could be somewhere else under a bridge somewhere, but you're not. Hallelujah. 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 It is indeed an honor an honor to be here. I've, I've known your, your pastor and first lady for quite a while. I have, me and my wife have given over the title of having the most children to them. And <laughs> we stepped away out of the competition. It's, it's all right. 
But it is, it is indeed a, 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 a honor to be here on this men's day. Uh, that was a very long bio, so I feel like you guys know everything about me. Um, I, didn't, I, did, I didn't realize he was going to read the whole thing. <laughs> but anyway, you know me now, so we're just going to get in it. Amen? Amen. So if you don't mind, stand on your feet and turn to the book of 1 Samuel. It's kind of interesting that the same scripture that was read earlier is the same one I'm coming from. So we just going to count it all joy. Amen. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, starting at the 11th verse. When you have it, say amen. And keep your Bibles open because we're going to jump from there to Ephesians. Those are only two stops. Only two stops. We're not going to go all the way around the metro area today. We're just going to go one stop, two stop. Amen? Verse 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Sin and Fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and withal of a beautiful countenance and godly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him. In the midst of the brethren. We're going to get there. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. You may be seated. You may be seated. We're going to start there. The topic, what a king looks like. Now, we can immediately see here that God has gotten annoyed with Saul. Saul had one job to do, was to go and destroy everything, everybody, every person, every cattle, all the spoils. And Saul decided, you know what, we're going to kill some stuff, but the good stuff we're going to keep. Hello, somebody. And God got particularly annoyed with this because first you got to understand that he didn't want Saul there to begin with. But the people cried out, so he gave him a king. And now the king you wanted is also the king now that's not listening to me. So you know what? I need to move him away. Because the one thing I'm not going to do is let somebody else distract my people from where I need them to go. So Saul, your time's up. And then he sent Samuel, I need you to go get my king. So he ends up at the house of Jesse. And Jesse brings forth all the men that he thinks should be king. Hello, somebody. The ones with the broad shoulders, taller than six feet, good countenance, strong, looks like they are king material. How many of us know we still do that? Hello, somebody. All you got to do is be on social media long enough to know that there are so many different criterias needed for somebody to be categorized as a king. But now watch, Samuel's looking, and he still hasn't got the okay from God. And he turns back to Jesse and like, surely God wouldn't have sent me all the way here for this. Because yes, all of them look like they should be. All of them dress like they should be. But it's still something missing. And he turns to Jesse and goes, is this all of them? And Jesse goes, what he's not saying was, you mean the one I really don't really think should be king? Because if Jesse thought he should be king, he would have been here. Hello, somebody. So it's not always the one that you think should be king is the one that ends up being king. So one of the first things you need to identify here is David was working. 
Oh, that's the first thing you need to understand about a king. Hello, somebody. That a king is working. Hello. He's not sitting waiting on something to happen. He's actively engaged in his life. And there is a greater thing that they desire than just sitting around being here. Hello, somebody. I, I'm going to preach by myself. That's fine. And, he, and, and, and watch this when we get down to, to verse 12 at the second half. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him. It's something about when David got in the room that God was like, that's it. Understand, he's not the biggest, probably the shortest, the smallest of all his brothers. The dirtiest one. Hello, somebody. The dirtiest one. <laughs> the dirtiest one. The one that don't look like he should be king. There's no suit on him. There's no, no lavender fragrance coming from him. He smells like the dung with the sheep in the field. Hello, somebody. I know where I'm at. I know y'all know what dung is. Hello, somebody. So he smells, he's dirty, and yet God says, that's my king. So it does not matter what it looks like, what it smells like. God has seen the inside of this individual already, and y'all are still stuck on the fact that he's out there with the sheep. God's not concerned with where you are and what you're doing. He has a call and a purpose, and I will call you out of the dung with the sheep and put you in the kingdom. But the problem is, is that we want to see the king all the time. If he doesn't have the money, doesn't have this big extravagant mansion, doesn't have the good looks, not over six feet tall, not broad shoulders, because that's what we all think we want. Hello, somebody. But in actuality, that's not what you need. There has to be a place in your life when you get to understanding the wants and the needs. Hello, somebody. Well, we all got a bunch of wants, don't we? Some of you right now got stuff you want now that you're ready for this to be over so you can go get the thing that you want. But we are all wired that way. Our society has made us all consumers and not builders. Watch that. Watch that. We are consumers, so we're always focused on the end result. Oh, God, that was good. Consumers are always focused on the end. Builders are always focused on the beginning. Because I know that there is an end, but understand right here is the beginning, and it don't look like what a consumer may want, but a visionary will see the end from the beginning, and the beginning from the end It's not a shock. But watch that, watch that, watch that. Watch when you go to a store. If you're going to pick out something, you want to make sure the box looks good, make sure everything looks right. But this one over here, the box may be a little broken, a little discarded, but the contents inside the box will be just fine. But you know what a store has to do? They got to discount this one because it doesn't look like this one. And we know that people won't spend the money if the outside doesn't look like they want it to. The box could be empty. Hello, somebody. The box could be empty and you pay full price for a faulty product. But over here, the box was damaged, but your product is good. And yet we're so caught up on what it looks like on the outside that we don't even give it the opportunity to see if it actually works. Hello, somebody. And so now, David arrives. You got to understand this. Ooh, there we go. David arrives. And God says, that's the one anoint him. Now, he didn't ask, put him into another room. Take him somewhere else. But I want Jesse to see. 
And I want all the brothers to see that what y'all were looking at, it didn't matter. And so now I'm going to anoint you in in front of everybody else who did not think you were good enough to be here. This is what a king looks like. This is what a king looks like. Not concerned with everything else. Because we follow when, when David gets into actual conflict, everybody else is scared. But David is like, who is this? that dares put his mouth on my God. Everybody else is scared of Goliath. And David is yet standing here like, who is this cat running his mouth? Am I the only one that hears this? These warriors all around, everybody's ready, but everybody's afraid of Goliath. And this is what you got to understand about a king. When the purpose is set for Who cares about dying? Watch this. Consumers are focused on how can I get the most all the time. And yet the builders are focused on how can I create something that does not end. Watch God here. Watch God. God put a king here that he could trust that would keep going past what everybody else was thinking. They were looking for a king. God had his eye on a whole lineage. And you got to understand where you are now is a result of the people that came before you. Hello, somebody. And if where you came from was not great, then it is a direct correlation of how you come up and then where you go. So you have to understand where you start has a direct impact on the direction that you're going. And so when God looks at this ruddy individual, he's not just looking at a king, but he's focused on a lineage. And now what will other kings look back and see David? We're still looking at David in the Peaks and the valleys, David is still a reference point of faith. Hello, somebody. Can we say that about Saul? We can't. See, it's something about when God picks you, chooses you, then you got to understand regardless of what may come up, God got you. And the problem is we get so scared, we get so afraid Because what we are looking at right now does not resemble the end product of what we think it should look like. And so now we sit here confused. How could David? This guy? This guy? In verse 13, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Ain't nothing you can do about it. This is, this is what baffles me, people of faith. Why do we get scared? The first time, it looks like it's not going to work. We all been guilty. Hello, we've all been guilty. I know, we don't, we, we, we don't. We don't want to talk about that. We, we always want to see ourselves in this great positive image. But sometimes you got to look at yourself and deconstruct yourself. And figure out the places where, you know what, I'm really weak over here. And I know I'm really weak. Hey, but I'm strong over here. And so I'm going to focus over here. And too many times we get caught up and we stay looking over here at the ugly. And clean it up and move on. But too often we want to let that ugly box sit over there. And we don't want to touch the ugly box because we already have it in our head that that one's not going to work. Something must have happened to it because the box is broken. The box is cut. But if any of y'all ever worked in retail or known some people, not any of us, that would damage a product just to come back and get it on half price. Nobody knows anything about that. Okay, okay, okay. Nobody knows anything, but watch that. 
I know y'all laughing because you know. And you have discarded that one that somebody intentionally made it look like it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. And so what we need to be focused on is what are the contents of this box? What are the contents? Because that's what God is focused on. God is focused on the contents of the box. That's why when David walked in, it didn't matter who else was in the room. God knew that's the contents of what I want. That's the person that I want. That's the one that I need. That's what my king will look like. Now watch this. We understand what he looks like. Because see, this is, this is where it gets good. What is a king supposed to do? Because I see it all the time. Everybody's my king, my queen, all this stuff is, is on all social media everywhere. Everybody's a king, everybody's a queen, every, but everybody's not. I'm just gonna say it just like that. I, I don't I don't I don't I don't really like sugarcoating stuff. Everybody's just not. There's a, there's a reason why there are layers. There's a reason why there are people here. Everybody just don't have it. And it's okay because everybody has a different role. Hello, somebody. And so when you understand that it's not about I got to be the king, I just need to be working for the king. And so when you don't get the thing that you want or be in the position in the church that you think you're supposed to have, then what? You become disgruntled? You don't like it anymore. Hello, hello. I'll walk all the way in this. You don't like it anymore. You want to move on. Stuff is different. Ah, this, they don't know me. And what God is saying, I, did, I, did I ask you to move? Did I tell you to move? And yet you end up walking lost. And so the one thing about a king is that a king has to understand his purpose. Hello, somebody. Walk with me to Ephesians. Walk with me to Ephesians for a hot second. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. We're going to start at verse 23. So watch this. The first thing, the first thing, the first thing about this king is that he must be a priest of his house. So understand right here in verse 23, it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the what? Savior of the body. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, because. If you can walk with me, I want to take it out of our secular view, right? Because secularly, we have always focused on that man being the head, that king being the head. He's the one that makes decisions, supposed to know everything to do, right? Yes, Lord, forgive us. Hello, somebody. When God created Adam and Eve, they were created to be partners. I will walk all the way in this and we will sit here. They were created to be partners. Not one being the king and the other one being the hired help. But being co-equal partners in this journey together. And if you look at nature. This is, this is one thing I've, I've become fascinated with as I've gotten older, is watching National Geographic and watching how the animals who are, quote, less intelligent than us function. It was one I, re I, I remember. I don't remember the name of the fish, but it was a fish. And during this particular time of the year, the male fish would swim all the way upstream, all the way upstream. And what the male fish would do was begin to pick up pebbles. 
and pick up pebbles and stack them and stack them and stack them and stack them. And there were other male fish around, and everybody's trying to make a stack. Do you know what they're making the stack for? It's because there is female fish coming later. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. So the male fish goes out in advance and prepares a place for the female to arrive so that she can lay eggs and then he can impregnate the eggs and then now they can start a... But now watch this. When the fish was stacking the boulders together, I'll call them boulders, little pebbles. When he was stacking them together, there were no females around. But he knew she coming. And so when she comes, I need to be ready. And so the entire time she's not here, he's working. He's building. And you know what happens when the female comes? I thought this was so interesting. Is that when the female comes, she has all these places to choose from. But the one who's been working on his house, she's like, okay, that one. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to be right here. Then the other fish come, the other females. And it's interesting that if you didn't have anything prepared, you know what you didn't get? You didn't get no woman. Because you weren't ready. Hello, somebody. So the first thing about this king is that he understands that he has to have his space together. He got to have his stuff ready. Hello, because watch this. We may be the head, but she the gift. I know this men's day. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Is that she's the gift. She's the gift. And it, isn't it interesting how, how we are set up to be so opposite? And we get frustrated about that. We get, why does she act like that? Why does he act like that? You weren't made to be the same. You weren't made that way. So, yes, it's going to be some differences. It's supposed to be. Quick, quick, quick story I tell on myself. We got married a long time ago. And in the beginning of our marriage, you know, head. I'm in charge of the budget. I got it. Now, my wife graduated in accounting. That's funny to all of y'all, and you got it that first time, right? How come it took me years before I finally was like, you know what? Why am I doing this? It is clear I do not care if we lose a nickel in the checkbook. It does not bother me. Line through it, new balance. I don't know where it went. It's gone. Somebody got it. It's not here in the book. I'm good. See, some of y'all old enough to remember a checkbook. Like, when you had to keep up with it, line through it, and if you was off, you got to go find and figure out what you missed, what you didn't put in there. I line through stuff in the heartbeat. Like, man, look, I don't know where it went. But my wife, on the other hand, is going to find a nickel. She's going to find a nickel. I leave her in the room like, okay, well, okay, you go find it. I'm, I, I, I got other stuff to do. I, I, I'm not going to be focused on that. That's not my gift. That's not my strength. Hello, somebody. I'm not going to get bogged down with trying to find a nickel. But does a nickel need to be found? Let that just sit right there. The dumb stuff we do because we're not really paying attention to what we should be doing. That's the problem when we become so religious that we stop looking for God. And he says, watch this. Love your wives even as Christ loved the church. So watch this. When we look at the priest of the family, 
And I looked it up, that Greek word is kephel, meaning head or top. But what I want to focus on is this last part of the definition, is a point of origin. Now watch this. When I say the king has to be the priest of his house, he is the origin of this kingdom. Hello, somebody. Now, that doesn't mean in that authority he bosses around and just spews out orders. But the responsibility here is to create an environment where everybody who I'm responsible for can thrive. So as Jesus broke it down, let the greatest of you be that minister, be that servant, be the one that is serving everybody that he's supposed to be in charge of. Because watch this, what you understand quickly in leadership is that if nobody's following you, you're not leading. (laughs) Titles don't create leaders, actionable actions create leaders. When people see that you know where you're going and you got an idea about what's going to work and you're really invested in me being better, well, then I'm going to follow you. But just because you say something, hello, somebody. Did that just hit you? Just because you say you the man, show me the man. Show it to me. Show me the king. And so often when we get that feedback, gentlemen, it's because your ladies are asking you, where's my king? The decisions that you're making don't really, I don't identify with the person I'm supposed to be following. I don't identify with that because my king, I thought my king was going to be like this. And you said you were going to be like this. And then you're not, then it becomes conflict. Because it's not that I'm trying to beat you down. I want to see the king come out. Watch this. Watch this. If we can go back to National Geographic for a second. Do you know who the most aggressive is? I heard somebody say it. The female. The mama. Hello, somebody. The most aggressive. Territorial. I thought that was so fascinating. It's like, yes, the king, we were looking at lions. The king really doesn't get up until it's time for him to get up. He doesn't. The females in the pride go do the hunting. When he comes hunting, it's big game time. Hello, somebody. When they're going to get the big stuff. But watch the women go gather and bring back. Watch this. That, that, that's not a little thing. In our society, we have regulated that to being that of of no importance, of no regard. But watch this. This is what we were created to do. And in every single situation in nature, when the male gets to the adolescent, he has to lead. Whether it's lions, whether it's elephants, whatever. The females will stay together. That male has to lead. Because he has to go create his own pride. He has to go be a king somewhere. You can't be a king here. This is your daddy's kingdom. Hello, somebody. Boy, I wish you got that. This is your daddy's king. You can't be king here. You have to go get your own. Hello, somebody. And in order to get your own, you have to be found worthy. Because watch this. Even in nature. The females go after the one who knows what's going on. You know why? That's not a bad thing. But watch this. She is focused on the kingdom, the offspring, the ones that she has to take care of. So what in nature, what she's looking at is the strongest one to protect. Oh, can I can I? Can I go deeper here? Can I, can, can I go deeper here? So when we look at it in our realm here, women aren't gold diggers. They're looking for somebody who can provide and protect your kingdom. 
Oh, boy, that's hard. There. That's hard, but it's fair. It's hard, but it's fair. And so when you're in here now and you're looking at this and you're like, wait a minute. When I'm looking at the lion, they are looking at, because, you know, they, the, the males got to fight. They cut up each other, beat each other up. And whoever's the last one standing, that's the one who gets to mate with the females. And the females are fine because that's the one who has proven himself to be the dominant one. Hello, somebody. Who is now able to take care of my puppies so when they get big, they have a chance to be big. Because what happens is there are stray lions that come. Hello, somebody. And if the king, when he fights that stray lion, if the king loses, then that stray lion now becomes the king. And you know what he does with the pups? He kills them. Lord have mercy. Do you understand your position, sir? When the stray lion comes, he's, he's coming to destroy your entire kingdom. And the reason she chose you is because she understood that you would fight to the death to protect us. And see, what's happened is we have distorted our roles into where we don't see the actual gift in the other person. We take the thing that is a positive and then turn it around and make it a negative on that individual. I wish you stay with me. Stay with me. How much time I got? I, I, I done lost. So now, watch this. And he says, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Now watch this. Read me one, one more verse. 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. And that last part right there. And gave himself. And gave himself. So watch this. The second thing is, is that he's a protector. The first thing he's the priest. The second thing he's the protector. Why is that so important? Because when we look at the church in Christ, what he's trying to do here is show you the illustration between husband and wife. Now watch this. When Christ was here, the disciples followed. They saw the works. They followed. No big deal. But now when works aren't shown, doubt arises then now following becomes harder because I don't see the Christ. So now watch this. What is this king a protector of? Watch how God always has protected the church. And so when we break this down, a, number, a woman's number one need is security. I know. It is. She wants to be secure in her emotions. She wants to be secure in her physical surroundings. She wants to be secure financially. She wants to know that she can take care of her responsibilities, which directly depend on your responsibilities. <laughs> These things aren't opposite. They actually work together. They create a harmonization when these things are secure, then now what you've always wanted is your peace. And now your peace is available because these things are secure. Hello, somebody. I don't know if you caught that. When you want peace, is she secure? Because if she's not secure, look at her. Everybody's back. Everybody's back with me now. You with me now? Because if there's no security, there will be no peace. What you want more than anything is your peace. Hello. I'll, I'll say it if they won't. They do. Just to watch the game and know everything is all right and I can just sit here and be. You know what? One of the things that we search to do is to be able to do nothing. This is why we work hard so we can get to a point in the day 
when I got nothing to do, nothing else to do, I'm done. Hello, somebody. And when we can get to that point in the day, we are excited. Because when we got up, we had a list of stuff to do, and now when we got it all done, I can sit down. Hello. But if there's no peace, if there's no security, then my seat is not going to be there that long. (laughs) So watch this. He is the protector. So my number one job is to make sure she's secure. Because when she's secure, then I'm going to get the things that I need. Hello, somebody. So watch this. He says, the husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. He was prepared to be a sacrifice for it. It does not matter what it is. You're worthy of death to protect. What is yours? Hello, somebody. There are very few things that I will fight over. I'm at that age now, man. Look, go ahead on about your business. I don't really care. But these people in my kingdom, I'm willing to die and go and get three meals in a cot, and it don't matter. But for them, that's what I will sacrifice. Hello, somebody. For you, maybe not so much. You're not my kingdom. Hello, somebody. But for my kingdom, this is what I'm prepared to do. And so, same way, likewise, as Christ was prepared to give himself for the church, this king has also got to be prepared to die for his kingdom. There has to be a focus in your spirit that I will give this kingdom everything that I have. This is mine. You just don't understand what we will do for the respect of mine. Hello, somebody. You have never seen two kings get in an argument or a fight about one not loving the other one. Never seen it. But I've seen a bunch of men get in a fight over disrespect. Oh, boy. Here we go. I knew it would get quiet when I came here. So now men understand in respect. Kings understand respect. Hello, somebody. And so if I am respected now, then I am more apt to do everything that's needed to do around here. Hello, somebody. Men need affirmation. Oh, boy, y'all done got quiet. I told you. Now, y'all, when I was on the, on the men, now y'all were up, standing up. Now, now we done made a turn, and now we get quiet. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Because these are the things that a king needs. Hello. When you, when you say, man, why, why is he asking me to do this? I get so annoyed with this. It's just the respect. I just want to know. That you love me. And yes, it's weird. I get it. But when you see the passion come out, then that does something to us. Like, you know what? She, she really down for me. All the way. What you need, baby? I am giving y'all the exact thing you need to be doing. It is that simple. It is so simple. What you need? Okay, I got it. Is that all you needed? Okay. Because why? That affirmation is coming in. That love is coming in. That respect is coming in. And when those things are there, there is nothing this king won't do. Hello, somebody. Go and work two and three jobs trying to figure out how to make stuff work. Why? Because I got to protect my kingdom. So watch this. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I love when we get into this this next verse. In verse 26, he says that he might sanctify and cleanse it. What does that say right there? So, so, so watch it again. Love the church and gave himself for it that he may sanctify and cleanse it. 
So there's still work to be done. Too many times when we get together, we think that it's, this is it. You're just getting started. People be so excited at the weddings. Oh, it was so beautiful and all this. Like, baby, baby, you just getting started. This, you ain't even, you ain't even hit nothing yet. Hello, somebody. But there is a continual development that is going to happen. Hello, somebody. Where you started is not where you end, but watch this. He said he had to cleanse it to sanctify it. So what it means was when they got together, they weren't perfect. That God still had some work to do with the church before the church could be what it needed to be. And understand that iron sharpeneth iron and the two of you are co-partners. So there is going to be some conflict. King, but you control the conflict. You control the escalation of the conflict. You know why? Because you're the one in charge. Watch this, watch this, watch this. You can be angry as all get out. But if you start talking like this, what's wrong? Why are you upset? I'm not going to get upset because you just threw a jab at me. Something else obviously must be wrong because I didn't do anything for that. What's wrong? What's the problem? And see, if I don't respond in an angry way, watch this, watch this. Because I already know who got the authority. I'm good with that. I know if I needed to flip this place over, I could. Hello, if I wanted to break stuff, I could. If I wanted to punch the wall, I can. <laughs> but what I want is resolution. I want my peace. And so if we can stay focused long enough because the problem is the problem. Hello, write that down. It's not me and you. The problem is the problem. Hello. And when you start throwing out at each other, you're the reason I don't have this. Wait, wait a minute. He's not the problem. The lack is the problem. So let's the two of us together work on what we're going to do about the problem. Because when we start throwing it at each other, then now we're arguing. And now what? Now we both lose. Hello, somebody. And so when we get into that place now, is now we are going back and forth, and now there's no peace, there's no security, and now you know what? Everybody's ready to go. Hello, somebody. Because we live in a society now where we, it's okay to leave. Hello, somebody. There is no more, I'm going to stick it out. And the problem is we make these decisions based on how we feel. But I don't feel like paying my mortgage every month. But you know what I find a way to do? To pay it. Hello, somebody. Because I know the consequences are if I don't pay it, I don't have a place to stay. Yes. Oh, boy. Stay with me. So now if I don't work on this thing here, then now I won't have any place of peace. Hello, somebody. So when we're looking at Christ's relationship to the church, he did everything to make sure the church could now thrive, even giving himself for it. So now the church could have the grace now to go. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word that he might present to who? To himself. A glorious church. I'm going to tell you as a man, there is nothing prouder than when you see everything that you've created thriving. And then you understand the sacrifices that you made for this thing to thrive. And you understand it. And it's beautiful. Hello, somebody. Everybody else ain't got to think it's beautiful. It's beautiful to me. 
because this is my church that I have created and my church is doing well. My church is thriving. And so understand, man, this is your kingdom. This is your church. And it's all on you. Christ didn't pass out the responsibilities of getting on that cross. That was his. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He didn't ask anybody else, not neither one of them 12 disciples. Hey, can you get on that other one for me? You know, take some of this with me so I ain't got to take it all. But he took it all. Hello, kings, kings, kings. No, it's not the prettiest thing. And no, it's not the most loved and respected all the time job, but it's your job. Hello, somebody. That's why I said everybody's just not a king. Everybody don't want the responsibility. Everybody don't want the pressure. Hello, somebody. But if you're going to walk in this lane, if you're going to walk in this road, these are the things that are going to happen. And so watch this, the last thing. He's the provider. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. He's going to provide himself for himself. Now watch this. Your whole check comes in and you just walk, all right, here it is, this is what we need to do. It's not even about what I want anymore. Hello, somebody. It's about the kingdom. What does the kingdom need? What does my kingdom need? My kingdom, my kingdom, my kingdom. And so the problem is we don't focus on our kingdom. We want to focus on everybody else's kingdom and what they're not doing. But if we focus on our kingdom, what we're supposed to be doing, then we can turn around and have something glorious to see the same way Christ sees the church. And so watch this. In verse 27, almost done. And he says that it may present it himself a glorious church, not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their what? Own bodies. He that loveth his wife It took a while to get that. It took a while to get that. But watch this. He who loveth his wife loveth himself. Remember I said that they were co-partners. And the most territorial, aggressive animal is the female. And I'm going to tell you what. When you have that person in your corner, because she's going to operate in her gift. You got to understand that. That's, that's, that's going to happen. I don't worry about my back. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't worry about it. Because watch this. When you, when you play chess, do you know what the queen's job is on the chessboard? Is to do whatever she has to do to protect the king. And when a woman is secure... You ain't got nothing to worry about. Because what you're not seeing, she's already there. What did she ask you about? Who? Sister uh, Jones over there. What, 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 what was that about? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, I just, I just know some others. I just want to make sure you, you, you straight. But she already knows something else that you don't know and you don't need to know right now. Hello, somebody. But just understand when I say I don't want you over there, just, just come with me. It's the reason. Oh, boy, that's hard right there. That's hard right there. It's the reason. It's a different set of games that's going on. So understand that she's seeing something that you're not. And it's Okay. So do you get to the point, all right, babe, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know. I can be just as dumb as I need. Okay. Why, why ain't you going? I don't know why I ain't going. I just know I'm not. I know I'm not. 
Because something else is afoot. I don't need to know it, but I need to know where my peace is, and I'm going to go sit myself where my peace is. Hello, somebody. Because why would I hate myself? You see how we do that? We hate ourselves just to show that we can do it. Why? Why? It gets very simple when you pull it all the way back. It's like, you know what? That really don't make any sense. I'm going to go do this because I can, but now she's going to be mad because it's something else I don't understand. And then now I'm not going to figure out what she's mad at for at least another week. So I'm just going to be sitting here quiet for a week, and then I'm still not going to know what happened. And I don't know anything. So now you're going through a whole week with no peace, trying to figure out why you ain't got no peace. And the thing was so clear in the beginning, all you had to do was come over here and sit down. It's really not complicated. Because she's going to trust the king to go do what he's supposed to do. Hello, somebody. So now trust her to protect you. And it doesn't make you less macho. How would it be if the president didn't go where the Secret Service told him to go? What's the point in having security? If we say, Mr. President, this place is not safe, we got several threats, and you like, well, I'm the president, I'm going anyway. Well, sir, we have all this data indicating that this is unsafe, and we know it's unsafe. Well, I want to go anyway. That's right, you're a fool. You're a fool. And so you're not understanding that this is your protection as well. You need protection. Ask Samson. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. So now watch this. And I'm done. I know I said that three times. For we are members of the body of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to the person that got his back. Shall be joined to the person that's going to look out for him. It's going to be joined to the person who's always going to be there for him. Hello, somebody. And until this, the two shall be one flesh. And at the end of the day, the most important thing the king needs is his queen. Because understand, if you're not leading anybody, then you're just walking by yourself. And so if you're walking by yourself and nobody's following you, then can you really say, that you lead it. Because watch this. When you create the environment, people stay. People want to stay. People want to give because they see that this is what I'm working on. This is worth it. Hello, somebody. So when that king is first the priest, he's the protector, and then he's the provider. And now that queen can sit back and do her job, which is make sure that king has everything he needs. Hello. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Because you need to realize that the two need each other. And so often we keep running around acting like I'm independent. I am not independent. I re I re yes, I refuse. I don't want to be independent. There's enough stuff I don't feel like doing. <sighs> Ask me the last time I went and bought my own clothes. <laughs> no. You figure that out too. Well, she, if she said it looked better, then it must look better. I'm rolling with it. Let's roll. I ain't got time to think about that. I got other stuff to do. Hello, somebody. Hey, Amen. The doors of the church are open. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Wow, 
what a word, amen. What a word, amen. Was he in anybody's house? Was he in anybody's driveway? He came all the way up to my master bedroom, my goodness. Come on and thank God for the cleansing, for the conviction. Oh, the cutting, Lord. We thank you for the cutting. But you're not going to leave us there, God. You give us time to be transformed into the men, the kings and queens that God has called us to be. Give this man of God appreciation and love with your hands and your voices for rightly dividing God's word and giving it to us just like God wanted us to have it. Now you ought to turn to your neighbor and say, now what? What you going to do with that? We want to open the doors of the church at this time for all of you all who need a relationship with Christ. Who needs a relationship with Christ? Raise your hand. I thought everybody's hand would be up. Hold on. Let me make sure. Can we, can we check on each other, family? Come on. You need to ask your neighbor. You need to ask your neighbor. Do you have a right relationship with Christ? Come on. Look them in the eye. Look them in the eye. This is a very critical moment, beloved. Come on. Do you, do you want me to walk with you? Because let me tell you something about me. I've been delivered too, amen? All right, everybody, from the pulpit to the door, the ceiling to the floor, has sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you ought to check on your neighbor right now. If you say you love them, if you say you're moving with compassion, and make sure they have a relationship with your Jesus. Is there one? Is there one? We'll wait on you. We'll walk with you. We'll come meet you where you are. That's how critical this is. Do you want to rededicate your life? If you want to be baptized in the cooling waters into the family of God, this is your opportunity, beloved. Won't you come? Won't you raise your hand? Won't you stand? Won't you allow us to love on you and to escort you into the destiny that God has called for you? My final appeal this morning is to welcome all of you all that have been looking for a church home. Man, you've been looking, you've been perusing the internet, you've been to 5011 churches, and now you are here. God says you are home. You belong here, beloved. This is your home. Is there one who wants to join the Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church family? This is your home, and you belong here. Let us work with you. Let us love on you. Let us pray for you. Let us serve you. Amen. As we go down from this experience, our custom to lift up all of our beloved sons and daughters of this ministry and of Zion who are okay come on brother says he wants to join the Basil Creek Church family. Look at this young king. Look at this young king. Came down by himself. Eleven years old and walking in the full faith and courage of Jesus Christ. Y'all ought to be on your... Come on, we got to encourage people. If you ain't got no gout or pain in your feet, to stand on your feet and give God some praise. What God is about to do is already done in this young man's life. Amen. Amen. We're going to welcome him into this family. We're going to pair you with the right. I want to give Rice a hand clap of appreciation for obeying the Lord. Obeying the Lord. All right, we'll get with you, Rice. Washington, we lift you up. Sister Mary Davis, 
and Sister Lola Booker, Sister Yolanda Utley, Sister Irene Baldwin, Sister Ruby Watson, we lift you up, Sister Dorothy Bell, Sister Lucille Moore, Sister Janet Curtis, we lift you up, Sister Mary Hood Saunders, Sister Andrea K. Moore, Sister Christine Stewart, Sister Tracy Taylor, we lift you up, Sister Sandra Gray, Reverend Clara Patterson, Sister Jean Hedgepath, Sister Karen Williams, we lift you up. Sister Dorothy McKinney, Deaconess Margaret Green, Deacon Catherine Jeffries, Brother Tommy McLean, and Brother Thomas Spence, we lift you up. Brother Alvis Walker, Brother Tony McDowell, Brother Robert Jones, Deacon Oscar Still, Deacon Jimmy Evans, Deacon Carl Tony Wilson, Brother William Hodge, Brother Larry Norris, Brother Justin Marlique Hodge, Brother James Turk Sr., Brother Lamont Party. Brother Dennis Slade, Deacon Sam Wood Sr., and Deacon Frank Reynolds, we lift you up. And if your name wasn't called, fret not, beloved, for God knows your name, he knows your need, and we lift you up. Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And the people of God said...